Hey guys, so I came back and today we are going to talk about migrations. Uh, so I decided that uh, the first video will be about basics of migrations and uh, I'll just go through basic operations and I will discuss the concept of jungle migrations and then in the next videos we will actually uh, go for more advanced stuff but let's start with the basics so basically migrations is something that you will need when you make changes in your models and uh, you need these changes to be reflected in the database that you use and well we can start uh, talking about database a little bit so uh, how migrations work in different databases uh, basically differ uh, for example by default we use SQLite uh, database and it has very little built-in schema alternation support and so uh, basically Django attempts uh, to emulate this uh, this uh, alternation alteration by creating a new table with the new schema copying the data across dropping the old table and then renaming the new table to match the original name and uh, generally it works well but can be a little bit buggy the alternative database that you can use is mysql uh, but it also has some problems uh, because MySQL lacks support for transactions around schema alternation operations meaning that if a migration fails to apply you will have to manually unpick the changes in order to try again um, and it generally also takes uh, a lot of time uh, if you have a lot of changes uh, to apply so at least uh, the documentation gives us uh, the best uh, option for the database storage as a Postgres uh, QL and uh, yeah basically it doesn't have the problems that we discussed earlier and I personally also use that so I can see here in my settings uh, in databases that I use this Postgres uh, database it generally works well and uh, it provides some options options that other databases does, uh, do not provide uh, but yeah so if you want to if you want your migrations to run smoothly uh, it's the best thing to do to install Postgres uh, PostgreSQL and uh, yeah it, it will be working okay Maybe I will have some video later where I will show you how to actually set up this uh, database here. But uh, let's go to the basics again. So we have models and sometimes we have, uh, and basically our models are representation of a uh, database table. So this is great database table. Uh, with different columns like subject and mark and uh, basically if you want to uh, make, make any change to this table uh, for example if we want to add some something else like uh, failed okay, um, yeah okay failed models boolean field default false so if we make the change in the model we will also have to actually transfer these changes to actual database and in order to do that uh, let's actually do that so we need to say python manage pi and then make migrations And as you can see here, 
the Django tell us that uh, we created the new migration which adds field failed to great model. Uh, where can we see this migrations? Well, we actually have these files here, migration files. And you can see in my project, I already had a lot of migrations. And that was the last one. Uh, it uses this migration class, which is based on migrations migration class. And it basically has two uh, important things. First is what is the dependency of this uh, migration. So basically it checks uh, was this migration applied and that's the, this is the one. And basically it will apply this migration only if uh, dependency is met. So if this migration was actually applied. And the other thing that it does, it actually provides the operations, uh, list of operations, and here is just adds field to this great model, and the name of the field failed, and it shows uh, the what what kind of field it is. And basically you can uh, check this information for any migration you make. For example, that was the previous migration. And as you can see here, uh, we had two operations to, to, to do. Uh, we created the model grade and then we also added this menu to, menu to many field to uh, our student model. So we added this uh, new model as a many to many field here. And you can trace your changes basically back to the first one, which is initial change, initial migration. And you can see here, it's called initial by, uh, it's called initial automatically. And it also has this uh, initial option true. Basically that's the first operation that we have to make in order to actually uh, apply all the other operations here, all the other migrations. And you can see that um, when I just created this application, the first, uh, the first structure of this application was that we had this model administrator with ID and name fields. Uh, yeah, so actually you can even write these files yourself, but of course you have to have some specific reasons for that. Uh, because usually if you just make some changes to the model and you need to migrate to add this field, you know, why would you write all this, uh, all this stuff here? It doesn't make sense. So you just uh, use this make migrations comment. But sometimes uh, you will actually need to, maybe, maybe you will need to actually have some um, operations, like really, really unique operations. For example, in my uh, previous job, uh, while we migrate, we had to connect to different dat database, uh, which was uh, not in the container of this database. Uh, so basically, we have to we had to connect to different database, which is not accessible um, by this application, and so we had to actually write these operations to connect to database and make changes there ourselves. And you might uh, have something like that, and then you will have to write your uh, migrations yourself, but usually you will not have to do it. It's really unique uh, situations. Okay, so we made migrations, and you might think that it's, it's okay, it's done, we migrated, but no. Actually, we migrate with different command. So we first make migrations, and then we actually migrate. And we can see that we apply this new migration that we just uh, made. And now actually we can run application and work with this new failed field here.
uh, basically of course these uh, migrations uh, they have this Django specific uh, class based uh, representation but of course they are basically just SQL uh, comments and you can actually check it out here if we want to check out uh, specific uh, SQL comments that we make that we execute uh, we can actually specify it like that SQL migrate then application name and then the file name and as you can see here we have uh, the description and here, here we have actually the uh, SQL comments so we, here we alter table administration great and we add column failed boolean default false not new and uh, then we alter uh, I'm not sure what this specific command does um, yeah but anyway then we just commit the changes uh, the other thing that you can do is you can uh, well let's create new migration here and yeah we got this new migration and let's check out the status of different migrations uh, for that we use comment show migrations and then app name and here you can see that we applied all the migrations except this one and if we migrate now we can see that this is applied too so it's uh, sometimes pretty important to know uh, what migrations we are applied uh, the other thing that you might uh, be interested in is that you can uh, make migrations when you make migrations you can specify a particular uh, application for which you need to make your migrations so no changes detected but uh, let's try to have uh, here again default false and let's go to different model here default doe and now we can actually see that uh, if we want to add migrations to a particular app we need to specify that so here we added the migration to administration application and then for example if we need to make it uh, separate then we can actually make migrations for searching application and we have different different migration created here yeah we can also apply migrations based on the application name and as you could see this worked well so uh yeah basically uh okay the, oh, the other thing that i wanted to show you is that you will uh you you will actually uh, you will actually see that thing so for example uh, we have here already some student objects Administration models import student student objects all and uh, basically uh, we might for example decide that um, there was this field which was uh, we were able to actually leave it blank and new but now we uh, don't want to do it again uh, but now we actually want this field to be required so we delete this stuff 
let's set max length and let's try to make migrations here and as you can see it is impossible to change a newable field age on student to a new non-newable without providing a default because we already have students and uh, you know, some of the students might have a new age here. And basically now we say, you know what, the age can't be new anymore. So that creates the problem and we need to solve it. So one thing that we can do is we can actually add a default, um, uh, de default age here for every student which doesn't have age. And the other thing we can do is uh, we can provide a, a default right now. So let's actually do that. Let's provide default and the uh, age will be 20 by default. And now uh, if we had students where age was new, now it will be 20. But for all the other students that will be created, uh, the age will be the number that we will provide when we create them. So that was pretty important stuff also that I wanted to cover because you will, uh, you will uh, actually come across that problem for sure. And basically, I guess that's it for today. Uh, I think that's, that, that was all the basics that I wanted to discuss. And... Uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, I came back after about five days and not one month, so that's cool. And uh, and also I have 100 subscribers now, which is also pretty cool. Uh, I feel quite good that I reached this number. And uh, yeah, I still, as usual, will ask you to support me by giving me a like, by commenting my videos and by subscribing to my channels and see you.